Hello and welcome to this tutorial video. Today we're looking at volume automation. Volume automation is, in my opinion, the most important part of a good mix. It allows you to turn up or down the volume of each individual track at various points throughout the song. This can be used for a variety of purposes, such as boosting a solo, ducking a rhythm instrument during a verse, or even muting or unmuting instruments. In Band in the Box, each track can be automated separately, and you can even automate the master volume. In the past, the only way to change the volume of a track throughout the song was using the bar settings window, which some people know of as the F5 dialog, since you press F5 to open it. This works fine for many things, and still works in the latest versions of Band in a Box, which is a good thing in case you have older songs that used it. However, there are some limitations when using bar settings. In particular, the biggest issue with bar settings is that the volume is set for the entire bar. There is no way to alter the volume of only a beat or two, or to have the volume change come in a beat early. As well, there is no gradual fade from one volume to the next, nor is there any easy way to visualize where the volume changes happen. This is a big one for me, as I'm a very visual person. Volume automation changes all that, not to mention it's way easier. Without further ado, let's dive into the tutorial. For this demonstration, I'm going to use one of our Songs with Vocals tracks. If your Band in a Box package included Artist Performance Set 14, then you can open this song easily by loading the style Uplift from the Style Picker, then click the plus button and choose Load Demo Songs. It has two options for this particular style. The one we want is the one that says Songs with Vocals. Volume automation is done in the audio edit window, so we need to go to the Views toolbar and click on Audio Edit. We then need to view the track we want to automate, so select the track you want from the mixer or using the radio buttons on the top of the window. Once you're viewing the track you want to automate, click on the Automation button in the toolbar here. It looks like a black box with a blue line. This enables automation editing mode. You'll notice this blue line here. This is the volume offset for this track. As you can see on the left, it is at zero, meaning that there's no change to the volume. The way this works is moving the line upwards will increase the volume of the track from where it's currently set in the mixer, and moving the line downwards will reduce the volume relative to the mixer level. Now, since we haven't done anything with this yet, you can see it's just a horizontal blue line. However, if you click on or near the line, you'll notice a dot appear. This is a volume node. Now, a volume node is exactly what it sounds like. It's a single point where you have set the volume of the track. On its own, it's not very useful. However, watch as I drag it upwards. You'll notice the blue line leading up to it is sloping upwards from the beginning instead of being horizontal. As you may have guessed, that means that the volume of this track will gradually increase, starting from the beginning until the song reaches this point, where the volume will then stay level. Let's hear what that sounds like. As you can hear, it gradually increased in volume. Now we'll move it the other way. And as you can hear, it gradually reduced in volume that time. Naturally, you can add another volume node later on to bring the volume back up. As you may have noticed, bringing the volume node down to this white line here completely mutes the instrument. This reduces the volume of the track to negative infinity, which effectively mutes it. I'll show you some good examples in a minute. However, for the moment, let me explain the basics. To start with, you may be wondering what dB means. This is shorthand for decibel, which is the standard unit for sound level. Decibels are a big subject, and I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but if you want to learn more, there are loads of excellent online encyclopedias where you can read up on it. The basics, though, are that decibels are a logarithmic ratio of power, meaning that a 10 decibel increase or decrease is a 10 times increase or decrease in power, or volume in this case. This is very similar to the Richter scale used for measuring earthquakes, where a magnitude 7 earthquake is 10 times as strong as a magnitude 6, and 100 times as strong as magnitude 5. 
Keep this in mind as you work on your song. Small changes in decibels can be a big change in volume. An easy one to remember is that three decibels increase is roughly twice as loud. Since the volume automation in Band in a Box is a relative control, this means that you can adjust the overall level of the track using the mixer without changing the automation. Let's say, for example, you spent hours automating the vocals to level things out, but of course your singer wants them louder. You can simply adjust the mixer a little bit louder to satisfy them without having to re-automate everything. Now that we've learned the basics, we should learn the controls. We've already learned that clicking on or near the blue line adds a volume node, and that clicking and dragging a node lets you move it. But it's also possible to move multiple nodes at once. Simply click and drag in the audio window to highlight an area. Then you can click and drag on the highlighted nodes to move them simultaneously. If you accidentally add a volume node, it's easy to remove it. Just right click or two finger click on the node, then select delete. This works when multiple nodes are highlighted too. You may have noticed just now that the right click menu gives you some options to set the decibel amount. You can set to an exact decibel level by clicking on the first option, then typing in a decibel value and clicking OK. Or you can set the node to zero decibels from the second option, or to negative infinity from the third option. Below the delete option is a reset all. This deletes all volume automation from this track in case you want to start again. Beyond that, all of the standard audio edit window controls apply here. For example, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse or the scrolling feature on your laptop trackpad to zoom in and out horizontally. Plus, if you hover the mouse over the vertical ruler, you can zoom in and out vertically, which allows you to reach new heights of volume potential. At this point, you now know everything necessary. You can stop watching this video and go forth and create. However, if you stick around a bit longer, I'll show you a couple creative uses for volume automation. If we take a look at the lead vocal track, we can see that I've done quite a bit of automation. This is because, as you might notice, the volume of the recording is a bit inconsistent. This is perfectly normal in a lot of recording situations. I've found over the years that some singers like to move around a bit as they perform, which often means that they're moving closer to and further away from the microphone. The volume automation I've done here is a way of compensating for that. Let's take a listen to the before and after. I'm going to zoom in on this section here as an example. Gonna get you back, baby, don't you tell me that it can't be done. Gonna get you back, baby, don't you tell me that it can't be done. You'll notice that the vocals are clearer and easier to hear the second time around. The singer starts off a bit more powerful at the beginning, backs off a little bit, then gets a little bit louder at the end. So to compensate for that, I brought the first bit down a little, bumped the next section up a little bit, added a little slope here since the audio kind of slopes the other way, as you can see, and boosted this one syllable here. Now you might look at this one syllable and think, gee, it's almost the same volume as the rest. Why is he boosting it? Excellent question. The reason is because our ears work in a non-linear fashion with regards to frequency. That particular syllable sounds quieter than the rest to my ears, in part because of what's playing in the background, but also because the word B has less upper frequencies than the other words, so I gave it a slight lift to make it sound roughly the same level. Another example here is at bar 34-ish. The singer kind of swells in the middle of this phrase, as you can see, so I dipped the middle ever so slightly just to make it not so overpowering. I'll play that section for you here. Baby, don't you tell me that it's all been wrong. Baby, don't you tell me that it's all been wrong. There are plenty of examples like this in the song. Feel free to examine it yourself. Now, if we look at the Guitar 3 track instead, we can see that I've made quite a few edits here too. But if you look closely, you'll see that everything starts from negative inf. Negative inth stands for negative infinity, meaning the track volume is turned down all the way. Basically, this means that the Guitar 3 track will be muted most of the time, except for these spots where it's turned up. 
This is a way of having an instrument come in only at specific times. I'll play part of the song so that you can hear what I mean. Gonna get you back, baby, don't you tell me that it can't be done. You can hear that this guitar track was muted up until that point, and I just brought it back in for an accent after the verse. Now the last example in this song is if we look at the master track, the end of the song has a fade out, but it didn't sound quite right with just a straight line fade, so I added multiple volume nodes to approximate a volume curve. Let's hear a comparison. The difference is subtle, but easy to spot if you know what to listen for. Either way, we've now covered how, where, and why you should use volume automation today. So that concludes our tutorial. I'll leave you with some parting advice. When it comes to volume automation, trust your ears. If it sounds right, it is right. And with that, we're done. If you have any questions or you run into any problems, feel free to contact our tech support team they're available by phone, email, and online chat, and they would be happy to assist. Alternatively, since mixing can involve some very personal creative choices, you may want to check out our web forums. This is a place where Band in the Box users from around the world congregate to share their expertise and opinions on the matter. Either way, keep on keeping on, and as always, have fun. <laughs>